the revolution. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is a special meeting of the City Council of the City of Southfield for Monday, April 23rd, 2012. And I'm going to call them all. Thank you. Mr. Moss? Here. Uh, Mr. Perkiaf? Here. Mr. Seiber? Here. Ms. Jordan? Here. Mr. Lamb? Here. Um, Mr. Frazier is excused this evening. Ms. Seymour? Here. Yes. You have six numbers present. Thank you. First item on the agenda tonight is under communications a request for recognition by Ms. Rooney. Um, I guess we could. I think I will. Just, uh, Rose, if you don't mind, we'll, we'll, we have to go through a couple things. We have a policy that we, when we have outside people, we'll put our communications at the end, so I apologize. Eight is it? Okay. Apologize, Mr. Moss. Well, it's just I heard this in specific to one of the items that we're going to discuss. I don't know if you well, want to put gonna it Well, she's going to get a chance. She's going to get a chance to okay. speak for this one. Okay. I apologize. Well, that's all right. Um, my kids are downstairs waiting for me, so I thought I'd be able to be oh. there. That's okay. Alright, uh, we have a, um, this item on the agenda is the 2012 face-to-face -face exhibit, item of the speaking. Through the chair, um, tonight we have Ms. Molly McNeese, SRAC art teacher for the Southgate Public Schools. I'd like to make a brief presentation on the school district's plan for the 2012 face-to-face -face exhibit to your honorable body and should be available to answer any questions after her presentation. And I'm going to get it queued up right now. Los Angeles to put up the photograph. 
um, all over Michigan. There were uh, photographs displayed in communities, and this is an example from Holland. Edinburgh. So on a 500-year-old building, we have modern art. And the art here is only meant to be displayed for a small amount of time. It's installation art, meaning to install and then to take. Sometimes they're up for years, but others, like our project from last year, some were up for only 30 days because the wind and the rain does um, have an effect on it, which is also part of the beauty. Brazil. Toronto, and they use just the smile. Minnesota and the high school borrowed the fire truck. Paris. And sometimes they would place them on the beach and cover the edges with sand and then photograph them as a just an hourly installation. Chicago. Missouri. And in Philadelphia. <coughs> Now, I wanted to share with you, because the um, Southfield City Council did support our project from last year, and we are so grateful, we wanted to come back and say thank you, and to show you the results of our project. Um, when we started out, we um, started out with 135 photographs, and 35 were displayed across the street in a beautiful manner on, on the post. <coughs> and you can see everybody from all walks of life, the teachers, the parents, the grandparents. We took three days and we set them all up on easels that um, were built by our maintenance department in, at uh, South Dakota Public Schools. And we had all types of schools from our community. We had Yeshiva Beth Yehuda School, Akiva School, and this year we've invited Southfield Christian School to join our project. This is one of my students. And as you can see, everybody was involved tasting. And part of it was just the experience of putting glue on the <coughs> paper. And as you can see, everybody worked together as a collaboration. And they were quite beautiful once they came up. This was across the street. And there she is putting her own photograph up. And to join the globe in a worldwide outdoor art exhibition was tremendous for our students. And in fact, I have some wonderful news to share with the Southfield City Council. Um, JR, the artist who won the TED Prize, was so impressed with us. Um, he asked us to join him because an English filmmaker is making a full-length feature documentary film on the global project and has asked to include our Southfield uh, young children from all, all of Southfield into the project. So we are now going to be in a global, international, full-length feature documentary film. And then, of course, the library has the most beautiful atrium, and we were so pleased and, and honored to be there for um, the 30 days. And um, to over 2,000 people come into our library every week. And uh, we were, they were so wonderful. And Mr. Day Viewing was so uh, helpful in displaying them so beautifully in, inside the atrium. And just finally, these are some of the images that were shown last year. And you can see just from an instant the joy that, that uh, <laughs> well, not Mr. <laughs> Man right there, but. But they're, they're fun to look at, and they evoke emotions from, from the view, and that's what art is, evoking thought, evoking emotion, <coughs> starting a conversation, seeing the faces. I had students um, drive by, some of my older students in high school, drive by every day out of their way just to see their face on the side of the road. I had parents stop, um, grandparents stop to walk around. It slowed down traffic on Lasha Road. Um, we just had so many emails, positive emails, positive thanks, um, and the only um, negative one that I heard was uh, my co-chair Lisa and I were pasting 
and we were fixing some of the edges that had just ripped a little bit, and the uh, Southfield Public School dispatcher got a call from a very frantic grandmother who was reporting that uh, somebody was trying to steal the photographs and she was going to jump out of her car and, r and stop us, and, and uh, Southfield said, it's okay, it's just the, just the art teachers just fixing a corner. So um, we're, we were just thrilled that the community really embraced it. And um, we're just so thankful, and we wanted to um, share share what what happened with our project. And uh, we would like um, this year's permission to use um, the site again from across the street. Um, this year, we would not uh, need any um, Southfield uh, donation of the time last year. We had M. Dot help in digging holes to put up the posts. But as you can see from our easel, um, it, it would be much easier to just set the easels out and then after possibly a 30-day uh, period again, we could just fold them up and put them in the back of uh, a trailer and, and um, have it quick and easy and um, very simple. So if you have any questions, I've brought two of my art teachers with me, Ms. Lisa Cassini and Ms. Julie Wolf. Um, Ms. Cassini works at Stevenson Elementary and Ms. Wolf works at Vandenberg. World Culture School, and then I brought um, uh, the head of uh, the art teachers, Principal Paula Witted Lightsey, who is the principal of Thompson Middle School, here here with us tonight with her helper. Any questions? Yes. The um, the letter that <coughs> went to the city center group originally. Do you happen to have a copy of that? Uh, not with me, but I can make sure that. Well, I needed it tonight. I understand it's not in anybody's. Uh, Originally from material. last year. Yes, I mean it's, it's important to have because, um, and let me tell you what my concern is. The, yes, the program, the project, I have no problem with. It's great, but the request was made of the city center group. And they authorize up to five thousand dollars for the project. Yes, sir. And nobody knows where the bills are. Nobody's seen. I mean, I've asked for the bills. I've asked for the expenditures that the city had incurred. And and um, how many individuals <laughs> were put in to put in anything? You know, the program at across the street, especially on on the corner Civic Center Drive in Evergreen, where they were put way back because the, the owner wanted it away from the road, mm -hmm. and there were three in there. Um, but the letter stated that, that at least the one last year, there, there was no responsibility uh, that you were taking, nor was there any insurance, or there was nothing that was to guarantee that if there was any injury on city property that you would be holding for it or you would have the insurance for it. Well, thank you, sir, for bringing that up. This is the first time I've um, been aware of this, but I will yeah. um, make sure that I talk with well, the um, park, city parks and rec department about this. But see, when it came, when it came to council last time, uh, I'm sure Mr. Seibert took it to city center. That's what no, 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 whoever steered them to that. It went to the city center group first. And and they uh, approved it and up to five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. The city center center money can only be spent in the city center area. Mm -hmm. yes. And of course this the pictures were everywhere. Yes, the city so center money that went for those pictures were only in the city center area. We also received um, funds from private donations and from the Southfield Public Schools and from the um, yeah. Yeshiva Beth Yehuda School and Akiva Schools. But I'm yeah. only interested in the money that the city <laughs> put out and the employees that were putting signs up. Well, I can in have that information. Words, I'll speak In other words, I'm, I'm very concerned about where we are sitting as far as the city financially now. Okay, but... And, and and uh, you know, you see the DIA, for example. Yes. Yeah. And and it's not your fault. I'm just wondering why nobody steered you to, you know, if people rent the front lawn, 
they don't for the event, they have insurances and, and I think there's a contract and, and things that they are responsible for. That's uh, a, that's so that a very we're, good point. We're not, I agree with you. So we don't so we don't get involved in any any litigation. Yes, uh, sir, I wouldn't want that to happen. And, and the other thing um, that uh, <coughs> I don't see a change in is that where is the publicity that what you see is what it is? In other words, is uh, art festival or whatever it, you know. In other words, there should be some kind of a of a publicity to let people who drive by know what they're seeing. Well, why is it there? Because there was a lot of questions. You know, why are those signs all over the place? Yes. And there was nobody to answer because most people didn't know. Yes, well, last year we were featured on Channel 2 News, Channel 7 News, yeah. um, all, all our local newspapers, the Southfield Sun and Eccentric. And um, this year we um, are developing which is in, in the plans, a QR, which is the digital square you see on advertisements. And that QR, if you scan it with your phone, um, that will bring you to a website. Um, Southfield Public Schools is um, having one of our art teachers develop a website that the QR would go directly. Um, we also paste, uh, posted um, boxes that realtors use in front of uh, houses that are up for sale. And we had flyers in there as well as the businesses um, who were um, involved in, in the project also. I went looking for the pictures and there was nothing that I could find or see that if I wasn't a councilman and I didn't go to the city center meeting, I probably would not have known mm -hmm. why those pictures were. Right, but also that's, that's what's really great about JR's work and, and the project is that you start asking questions and you start going oh. into the schools and you start saying to your neighbor, what is this about? And you start that conversation. And that's what mm -hmm. the beauty of this, this art project because art becomes this way of talking about different difficult things and, and having a conversation start about the art and our, our children. I've uh, seen on your examples, uh, other than the library, they're all in unison with a building or tied to a building mm -hmm. or something as opposed to just right along the street. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's totally different than the way they have been shown. They have been based on office building walls or business walls or whatever. Yes. They're not just endlessly on the, on the street. Yes. So I, I guess I am still, I, uh, in other words, DIA put up, uh, as you know, around the city, they put up uh, uh, pictures from the DIA. On yes, on they're artists. inside our project. And, uh, and they had they had have a contract and they also had, you know, flyers and things. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. Mm -hmm, I am. And so so I just think that everything should be the same. Everyone who gets permission to use the city property or the right <coughs> way, you know, there should be some kind of a policy and guidelines to follow. And there doesn't seem to be one in this case. And I think the, the attorney, I think that there has to be some kind of liability insurance if something should happen on city property or on on the rights of way that uh, it would cover. We don't want to do that in the, in the agreement, right? But we don't have an agreement. We, we do not have an agreement. Mm -hmm. I'd be willing to talk with uh, the city parks department about that. Otherwise, good luck. I think that's or, the, or, or the or the city or whomever, because I'm 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 the art teacher at, at um, you know the. Well, that's why I said somebody should have guided you through it, and, and I was surprised they didn't have. Well, we we've, we've had a lot of lessons learned about the project, and um, the reaction to the project has been overwhelmingly positive for the city and the businesses. Yeah. And but that isn't the problem. Right. The I problem understand. is that we have to make sure that we are sued. Yes, yes, sir. And I do not <laughs> want absolutely do. Not, I'm with you. I don't want the city to be sued. And we all work with anyone, and even sir, your your guidance to well, to help with this I don't set the project. rules. We we set the rules, and the <laughs> department reviews the contracts. Okay. Well, whoever whoever would be doing that, I'd be willing. And I know my co-chair. Um, she coaches track tonight, so she will. She's on her way. 
and um, we'll, we're just very, very grateful for the How many are being put across the street on the city center group? Do you know at this point? Um, not right now. We're, we're still talking. We, we wanted to speak with, with you, you all first. Um, um, but um, the schools, we, we plan to put a picture on each school mm -hmm. and um, in front of Southfield High School is such a, a, a positive uh, that that's, that's in the yeah, right now. I see Mr. Shire putting one up. He had a good worker there. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes, he got he wasn't a little too good glue on his He wasn't too good with the glue, but... <laughs> well, I, I yelled at him at the proper moment. But <laughs> <laughs> he kept in line, yeah. That's right. But um, what's exciting is this year we're including our preschools, um, Bussey Center and Magnolia Center, which feeds into our Southfield Public Schools, and they're overjoyed. That, and uh, I plan the um, the busing um, company that runs our public school buses um, has agreed they're um, going to um, take my students from SREC, um, who are. Um, very excited to be bused to the preschool to help teach how what this project is about to the little people, and we're going to have a little pizza day. So we're very, very excited about that partnership. It'd also be good to have some kind of a pamphlet to talk about the artists a little bit so people get to know, mm -hmm. you know what made him famous and how he is I famous think and how his work is being shown. I think, again, this is the lessons learned from last yeah. year. Oh, yeah. We're, yeah, we're just really, we're was. really excited about this year's project, and um, pa from pamphlets to the green QR to mm -hmm. just even the students knowing what it's about now, they're asking who's going to be in the photographs this year, and and um, the principals are asking when are we going to put this stuff. We plan to pay May 17th, 18th, and 19th and 20th, which is a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, we took three days to pace last year, so we're just kind of adding on another day um, just to make sure we have everything for our parents and our students and, and everything set. Okay. I don't know. I I agree with Mr. Sakaki in terms of the policies that we've used in the past when someone puts uh, uses the front lawn. So I think the school's attorney should probably draft the agreement that we would use as opposed to Lying on our legal yeah. I think that should be there. The burden should go on them rather than trying to put together. We have standard type of yeah, we have. Yeah, sure we have one. So it's a good That's fine. That's fine. Sure. 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 Okay. Uh, my question, my other question has to do with specific locations. Yes. So you're saying across the meeting uh, center. The, the civic center was, no, I'm sorry. The other side. Correct. And each of the public schools, each of the high schools, yeah, each school will be displaying um, their students uh, on their property, and um, some businesses have asked us, like last year, to be, to be part of it. So are we blanket the city, or are we looking at targeted areas? As it is We're looking at a targeted area in front of um, Southfield High School, and um, using um, um, some of the fence lines um, in front of Southfield Lathrop on 13 Mile. Um, which is a really nice, viewable area, and the Busby Center kids are very excited to put that put that up as a major area. But right now, we're um, my co-chair and I are looking at how many photographs we have, how many we're putting on the schools, and this is all right now in discussion. Where should we put it? And we're talking with the parents and, and the students and our principals on logistics. And um, that's also should be a question for my uh, boss here, Ms. Paula, would it like the, the, the principal who's in charge really of all, all of this for our project. Okay. So in terms of the time frame that's going to be displayed, you said you're going to work on it the weekend of uh, May 17th. Yes. Now, when will they actually uh, be seen in the community and for how long? Um, last year when we placed them up, after about 30 days, they really started to wear and tear. So if they were part of the city and um, if the city project put up across the street, um, a 30-day window would be just perfect for us for that. And then um, mm -hmm. with the public schools, we had ours up for about two months. And with the wind and the rain and the sun, after about two months, uh, Mr. Cyber did give me a call and say it was time for, <laughs> for them to be brought down, <laughs> in which we did. And it was very easy with the collapsible um, easel. And um, Chaz was our 9-foot by 12-foot portrait of our second grader on the side of the university, and maintenance took him down. But 
with just the glue and water, it just comes right off. Um, there's really no environmental damage. Um, it's just a matter of picking up the easels that are reusable and, um, uh, you know, how long they're up. Some of the ones that JR has put on the Palestinian-Israeli wall have been up for five years now. And they look like, you know, just a little wind damage, but um, they're, they're still up there. Yeah, my concern, I do see them last year at the 10 mile Lansford area, which is right next to uh, South Hill High, is that they did look very, very uh, undesirable after they were uh, beat up by the wind and the mm -hmm. rain. Is there any way that you can use better materials? Either, I know it may be more costly, but it may look a little bit more better in terms of laminated materials or some way that the paper doesn't peel. Right. Well, so what we're using this year is we're going to use a wallpaper paste instead of our flour and, and water glue mixture. And um, part of the project is is that they they're they're meant to be worn. They're meant to be only up to temporarily. And and that's part of the process with this um, material, with this um, with the photograph. So then maybe would you stay consistent with the public school? taking them down within 30 days because if they stay up here for 30 days and they're ready to go down, it visually doesn't look good if they're still up someplace else and yep. they're beginning to feel it. Well, that's, that's really great. That's something that I can talk to my um, Ms. Wood and Lightsey about and, and the, the people who are in, you know, uh, the South Bend Public Schools. That they will really see more of a uniform project. They, they go up at the same time. Right, and, and they're taken down at the same time. Well, I, I'll be sure to discuss that with this with the team and um, our superintendent, mm -hmm. Monica Robinson. And you indicated that you're expanding uh, and introducing this to preschools as well? Yes. Okay, I because they, they, they wanted to be, they didn't, let me back up. We didn't know how big this was going to get last year. All I did was ask my principal to put one picture up on my building and one picture up on, on this um, permits building at Levy, and then it started to grow from there. And it was just exciting and to be um, kind of part of something that just grew and grew and grew to an international film. Um, it's just a blessing. So right now, um, the preschools asked us to be part of this, and we said, of course, because they're, they're, our, they're our children of Southfield. And um, it'll be interesting maybe next year if we include the adult ed or, you know, because this is a community project. So we want to keep it small yet confined so that it's manageable and controllable because we are looking at some wonderful art teachers here <laughs> who have spent countless hours on their own time looking at photographs, talking to parents. Um, we're not paid for this. You know, this is just an extra project that we're so proud of and so proud to be part of. Thank you, I'll give you the name of another Oh, we would love that. All right, thank you. I just had a few questions about the process um, by which the students are chosen. Yes. Uh, you know, how, how does, is it decided who participates? Where are the settings of the different pictures? Is it just taken kind of candidly, or is that a studio in school somewhere, or a room? And uh, how do you, uh, how, how are you expanding to the non-public school? Um, well, the process is, is that um, uh, two weeks ago we asked uh, the principals and the art teachers of um, not only our South of Public Schools, but with Yeshiva, Beth Yehuda, and Akiva, and we've included the, um, I'm sorry, I got a sick of my throat, <coughs> the Christian school. And we said, just take photos of your kids. Um, white background. Some kids are just candidly taken outside on the bricks. And last week on Thursday night, <coughs> we um, met, and for three hours, we did a slideshow of all the photographs. <coughs> I think you're getting a couple. Oh gosh, thank you. <laughs> and um, <coughs> excuse me for one second. Got a tickle. Oh gosh, thank you so much. Perfect is what I needed. Um, so once the slideshow was going through, you could tell once a child photograph came up, as y as you saw from the black and white. <coughs> um, we would see about five photographs of an, ooh, look at her, or ooh, look at his expression. Yeah. So then we moved that file into a new file of the oohs and ahs. Okay. And then from there, um, there must have been 10 people in my kitchen 
<laughs> as we're you know, projecting these on my living room wall. Um, so out of that, um, the, you know, there was more than that. So we, people just kept coming over and, and um, excuse me. So then out of those, we would have a top 30. And so we kept moving those students around. And often the art teachers would say, I don't want to be part of the process. You take the students. Yeah. So because we, we know these kids. We know and we fall in love with them dearly. And, um, are some of the pictures from last year going to be held over, or is it all no, only bad? they're all new. Okay. Good deal. I just would say, you know, maybe even kind of take a scan of all the schools in the area, because you never know if it's a non-public school, they might want to participate. Yes. Um, but other than that, you know, I thought last year, it made me stop and think and look at the pictures, so it's Excellent. great. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. For the chair, <coughs> um, this, this the item was uh, reviewed last year by the building officials. They do not consider this any signage. They were specifically told, though, that uh, they couldn't use or incorporate any logos. So some of the um, demonstration photos that were originally proposed had like a, a Nike shirt or something, and we were told that that would be considered signs. But um, uh, it was clear that this, this was not considered signage, and um, they're not allowed to put them in the right of way. They have to have them on either private property or on the school site. But if those two conditions were met, um, this, this was not considered signage at all. Business came along and wanted to put a picture outside the store, we wouldn't allow it. Well, um, uh, again, the, um, the businesses that participated last year put the signs inside their window. And uh, that so I'm talking the about the businesses not participating, their own business, they want to put a, pic put a picture out there and sign it, and that's prohibited. Well, again, so I'm speaking. Where, where so there is a difference. There's a difference if you're advertising a product. This is advertising. Uh, this we, we determined with the sign official uh, that this was, this was not signage or this was not advertising as long as it did not include any logos or words. Oh, come on. Come on. You're sending out flyers and going on TV. This is a, this is a temporary art exhibit. This is a temporary exhibit. This is a school from now on. Well, again, I, I, I'll defer to the sign, um, sign enforcement officer, but well, I know it's clear. The sign it's clear. Officer is going to do. It's clear. Know. We've talked to, to him and the building official about this last year. As long as it doesn't include any advertising or logos um, and where it's located and the inside of the window, it was not considered signage at all. The school is introducing it as their program. And a private artist, the company, is putting. Uh, it was putting the project to work. Fine, it's all the same. Well, again, this this is a student uh, school sponsored I know, I project. Know. There's there's no business I'm, involved. I have no I have no objections to this. I'm just asking about the project. I think it's a fair question. Want to do the same thing? Yeah, I think we have to be careful. But in in this limited capacity, under the guidelines that we you know outlined, this is considered art and not science. From now on, we shall see. When the business come along, I want to put a sign out in the picture, and if Godzilla turns it down, we're going to beat them. <laughs> we're going to get the business is going to be able to put their signs up and advertise their products, just like the school is advertising their product. This is a product. You don't see the same? Where you got blinders on? Are you asking me what my thing well, is? I'm telling you. Uh, yes. I think this is a good thing. It's featuring our not future children, I don't our, our future of our beautiful. city. It's better this time than it was last time. And there's I notice you have a different format this time, which is better. Okay? Thank you. The last format was not good. Yeah, Mr. Lance, I just want to say if there's been lessons learned, and we're trying to improve. That's right. I yeah. agree. 
but there will be a conflict with the private industry among the scientists. Okay. Okay. Uh, just a, a couple of uh, observations. <coughs> Last year, um, by six weeks, they started the most dog year. Mm -hmm. Given normal weather, um, I would suggest 40 days uh, for this. It's a lot of work that goes into this, and they don't all get put up at once. Um, but 40 days is just shy of um, six weeks, and um, the interesting thing that happened last year, uh, for instance, Channel 7 was the last one to do a, a report on it, and yet every day the Channel 7 truck, news trucks, would drive right by it at 10 Mile and Losher, and finally somebody called from the station and said, what is that, and why haven't we, and asked us, why haven't we done a story on it? Um, and, you know, I turned around and said, well, I don't know why you haven't. Um, get over here. Um, and so they um, they were the last, but it, it got a, l a lot of very favorable uh, publicity. And I, I think uh, that the same thing would happen this year. People did come from all over uh, to see it. Um, there was a very nice feature on um, Fox News. Um, the other thing, um, the, the only, um, at the time, this is, uh, I was working and this was my department, no, no uh, tax dollars were spent on this other than in-kind um, school trucks were used to transport the easels. Uh, but all of the easels, all of the paper, there was uh, uh, an additional $5,000 uh, came from um, uh, uh, local uh, donors. Uh, for instance, Barton Mallow donated $500 to this project. Uh, Floyd Allen, uh, an associate for law firm. Uh, Mr. Allen lives in Southfield. Uh, he's a big uh, uh, Southfield school booster. He uh, provided $500 uh, for the project. Um, he lives in Southfield. His law firm is in the Fisher Building. And there, there were other small donations. So um, the whole thing was done by really volun mostly volunteer labor, as the pictures attest. And um, the funding, um, there was no direct um, um, school budget uh, spent on this. Um, uh, and interestingly, uh, having um, uh, stood out at 10 Mile and Losher, I know there were some concerns about uh, distracting drivers. And the a actually, the opposite uh, thing occurred. Traffic flowed on Losher. People went slower and, and, and took this in. It was, um, uh, you know, usually people just go to A to B and zip along, and um, this had this had the opposite of, uh, of that. Um, so I, uh, you know, I thought it was uh, obviously a very positive thing, and what a great thing to showcase our our kids and those faces—they're precious. Um, it was. Um, very, very um, gratifying, and, and all of the comments that um, Ms. McNeese said were very positive about, about the exhibit. Mayor Vaughn? I just have um, just a concern. Um, I thought this was a great exhibit, and I'm glad we're going to do it again. My, my question is, as we include uh, the private schools, I thought it was a community event because these were actually Southfield children. They're the faces of our community. And as we expanded, and I know every school in our city has some Southfield residents, and I would think that it would be the Southfield students, and um, I mean Southfield residents. So these are our children in our community, and it's our face, their faces. And, and I think that's kind of the way I would like for it to go. I wouldn't want us to expand to the point where this is not our children. I, I feel very strongly about that. It's a, a South Hill. It's our children. It's the face of the community. And I know for a fact the uh, Akiva and, and um, 
Yes, she's on in all of those. Have Southfield residents in the in 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 those schools. Southfield Christian has Southfield residents, and I I would like for this to be a Southfield exhibit and community uh, basis. That's just my opinion. And I, I don't know where you have gone with I'm that. I'm in complete agreement with you, Mayor Lawrence. Is that it, Ms. Lawrence? Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Lawrence again.
That's all right. That's all right. Um, well, with our public schools, because I am a full-time employee of Southwest Public Schools and I teach all day, I have two young children. Ms. Ms. Herman teaches all day and these two fine uh, women next to me teach all day. Um, finals are coming up. This is not only a time management issue, but also something that we feel we can be responsible to, to have something um, quality, not quantity. Um, from the lessons we learned last year with um, printing issues and all these things, we wanted it under control. Now next year, I think that's a wonderful idea. We can even discuss including those other schools this year, but as, um, as personally, making you know, 135 gallons of glue in my kitchen um, you know, and to include um, every charter school, you know, would would be for me right now overwhelming. But I can discuss it with my co-chairs and my my teachers here. But right now, there's 20 students from each school. Okay, I'm not talking about all the students because not all the students in charter schools live in Southern. We're talking yes, for like around the table is the one has <coughs> people that live in Southern, students that live in Southern. Yes, correct. Am I understanding this correct? Uh, at the different schools, I think Southwood Christian, I think Oceva, and the Shiva Bessie they are not all Southwood students. Yes. You know that, right? Yes, and okay. we noted in our in our letters to them that we would like to see Southfield residents, I believe, in, in our phone calls with them. Um, but with that's our... I'm going to eliminate, I mean, for some of the, I'm going to sure that's going to probably offend some of the students because they'll say, well, we go to this yeah. school and we don't live here. Uh, I'm not suggesting we do it, but I think the idea of being Southfield students does make sense, even though the school might, you know. Mm -hmm. And for us, it, it did make sense. Yes. For us, it did make sense also, yeah. but because we are volunteering our time, and this is a passion for us as artists, teachers, to, to see this project come to life. Uh, I, I, I know what you're saying. I really do, and I appreciate what you're saying about your schedule. But we're presenting this as a community project. Yes. <laughs> Nobody cares if volunteers are working on it. Right, but if, if a school came forward from the charter schools or the private schools, we would welcome them with open arms and help I them along wanna, with I don't want to leave people out. And, and, make and we can say as an different. open invitation to, to those schools, if they come forward, we, we would they certainly they can participate. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm not talking about you doing all this by yourself, not at all. But if we're going to do it as a project, it's got to include all the... The length of time is pretty much, I think, everybody agreed on 40, 40 days. What I would like to see, personally, is a little more variety. You said you're going to put them in different schools, which I think is a great idea. Every school in Bob will have at least oh. one photograph.
there with a direct process. We also have guests there. Contractors up front again. Yeah, we have the contractor, uh, so we are ready for council consideration uh, on this matter. To the uh, city administrator, um, this would be the third time, correct? Correct. And the two former, um, I'll call them owners for lack of a better purchaser, um, they forfeited their um, earnest money, correct? Correct. How much did we um, um, get on that? <coughs> Yeah, there, there was there was an initial purchaser um, who walked away within the due diligence period, so they got their deposit back. There was a second purchaser that the fourth <coughs> year uh, did deposit up to ten thousand dollars. There was a third purchaser who purchased them on land contract, and they paid between their monthly payments and what they put as their down payment, they paid over two hundred thousand. And then they lost it. We, we forfeited the land contract because they stopped making payments. So really, this is kind of a fourth sale. Um, but again, the first one, they walked away in, in a timely manner. So over two, yeah, probably 250 when you combine all those amounts. My, my reason for asking that is that um, I think that's an important consideration. Uh, I hate to see, I'm a realist. Uh, I hate to see this property go for 175000 but when I look at the, the other bids that were submitted, uh, I'm very grateful for it. <laughs> but at the same time, um, we were involved in a public improvement, um, having another, uh, especially for emergency vehicles, having another exit, uh, freeway exit. Um, the alternative was uh, replacing a parking structure and an office building that uh, I mean, uh, originally this thing was going to cost millions. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, I think that um, this is a good offer made a little sweeter by the fact that we've had forfeited money to uh, offset our, um, our, of our investment. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I plan to support this. Um, <coughs> yeah, I was just going to mention that, um, that we met with the uh, purchaser and the general contractor and the building department and we went through the whole series of things to see whether or not they would have enough experience or a general contractor that would have experience to get these things in shape. And so uh, we were pretty satisfied that this was bringing it before council today. Yeah, I, know, I, I just want to chime in that I know that Christian Tabernacle uh, has been a good neighbor in this community, and this is a good marriage. Um, and I know that they're going to be sharing a driveway with the with the uh, con condominium association next door. And I know we're about to hear from a resident, a member of the board. So I just think it would be good kind of uh, good neighborly policy just for them to also introduce themselves to the community right next door to them. Um, so if, I don't know if the potential bid recipient is here, so I'm sure they'll hear from. Yeah. Yeah, they've been a good neighbor in the community, yeah. and it's worth to kind of extend the introduction to the people that you're going to be sharing that entranceway with. I have to say that we, you know, we've been dealing with this for the last <laughs> eight years, <laughs> and to see a, a well-qualified purchaser take this property is great, even the fact that they're a church. Now they're giving uh, an opportunity to, if it's not the members, it might be other people in the community to have um, a very nice home. Because those are, once they're brought up to code, those are very nice homes that's added to mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, very excited to see this, um, this buyer purchase this property and be added um, in a sellable condition, in a livable condition.
everything they want. <laughs> Hold them to it. Yeah. <laughs> you Hold me to it. When I say something, you can hold me to it. Okay? They deserve this. Mm -hmm. It's an excellent, uh, church. what do I call it? Church. I don't want to say church. It's an excellent type of... Organization? Huh? Organization. Organization.
I do have for the city as we go through because there is an electrical meter on the outside of the fence line that takes care of one of the lights that is on our property. We need to know who that is, who's, who, who handles that. And I think you guys had to put in some time ago because uh, I think on there's the city of Southfield. Security light? Yeah, it's a security light at the entry to our parking lot there, or to the parking lot. Four. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, as you know, I mean, if you might have seen the inside, there's been a lot of uh, sort of flooding and stuff within the buildings. Um, so once again, the basements will be totally cleared out. Previous ownership that had it, they did some work in the basement that wasn't up to code. Mm -hmm. So the clearing out those basements makes them open basements so that there's uh, no living space in the basement, even though there is a partial egress window on each one of these units. At this point, the egress window is just undersized from what our safe is. Um, and we not looking to go to three bedroom at time, much more work at the time, but it'll be hopefully considered in long term future with these buildings uh, um, if we decide to look at space and this will be you know, finished and expand the egress windows that it will be accepted. Okay. Um, Mr. Jordan, um, Mr. Short, do you want to move that or just wait? No, it's, uh, it's on the agenda. Yeah, it's on the agenda. Uh, so One other thing, we're we are aggressive about getting started on this, and that's kind of delayed. We've got a couple, quite a few estimates from my contractors, you know, our roofing and our, all our stuff. Um, we know there's going to be a little more time frame before we can actually start pulling permits and get started. We do not plan on having work on all 13 units at one time. So we're going to be working from one of the windows of the building units all the way through. And we're probably looking at two or three units at a time, proceeding, moving on to the next two or three. Um, I don't. We want to try and get bodies in there as soon as we can because one candidate is an investment. Mm -hmm. um, we take time trying to do all of them at one time. It's going to take way too much time, way too many vehicles out there for construction guys and everything else, and just get way too crazy for the way everything's set up. But the question is on here it does say after the bid was accepted that um, certificate occupancy must be occupied by November 30th of 2012. Is that what it's on your? By your city of Southfield, it was on the, the, the uh, RF, RFP, RFP, yeah. Right. Um, I believe I read it here. It says certificate occupancy. Does that mean the whole bill, all 13 units, or is only, you know, within hopefully within 30 days to 45 days, we'll have the first two to three units um, mm. rented or excuse me, leased um, to our client. Um, but November 30th, I do not believe we'll get completely 100% done by we'll the like Thank you. At this point, there's approximately going to be close to 400000 if not better, put in this building. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys want to know that, but they are, <laughs> they are, they are yeah. pushing you know, more quality, and that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. We, we want to continue to be good neighbors and uh, get the project done, get them full. We don't get the approval tonight. I'm sorry? We don't get the approval tonight. Wonderful. We'll start tomorrow. <laughs> well, we got to do the property. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. <coughs> yep. Start getting our permits pulled, uh, ready and stuff. Yep, yep. I better. Well, that was present. There was a resident. I'm going to let her speak and say that she finished. Is that? Any questions? Anybody else who was kind of behind the schedule here? Mr. Moore, was there anything else you want me to add to that? Well, I'm okay. It's going to be great. <laughs> 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 I promise you. It's going to be fantastic. We believe you. And you, I think you'll be proud of it. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
please understand. Going back to the year, the West I-696 ramp was built. The Franklin Orchard lost its entranceway on Franklin Road. We, Stonebrook, was asked, were asked by the city to allow a driveway on our property so that those residents there could find a way into their units. We were given some landscaping at our entranceway as a gift for our cooperation. Actually, we were not really given much of a choice. When developer Etkin wanted to build his medical facility adjacent to our entranceway, the plans we saw were unacceptable to us. Frankly, it looked like the good ship Lollipop coming in for a landing right next to us. No new plan was made available to us, so the medical facility was built across the highway. We were pretty much cascaded for being an obstructionist in this project. One, it was ugly to us, not within the architectural look of our community. We would have had to put up with lots of extra plastic coming too close to us. Yes, we were uncooperative on this. Well, friends, we had been mighty cooperative when that driveway was put in our property. We weren't in the mood to accept <coughs> an ugly building next to us. Now, we could use some help. Let's flash forward to today. Times have changed, really. We know all too well that the city has become the landlord of the empty Franklin Orchard. We know that many have come forward to buy it with awful results. Here's how we understand the current situation. Christian Tabernacle is the highest bidder for the property with plans to rehab it and make it available to new residents. You all know the figures. I don't need to walk you through them. Now the city is happy because it's no longer a landlord. Okay, <coughs> herein lies our problem. For the past few years of this economic tsunami, Stonebrook, like all other communities here, has had an influx of families with kids, mostly renters, who I'm really sorry to say do not exemplify the Southfield standards. Unfortunately, Stonebrook was not designed to handle this amount of kids. We have no playground. We have nothing for them, nor can we build a playground now that <laughs> because of the loss of, of revenue from defaulting co-owners. Now we have a buyer for Franklin Orchard. I am positive that Christian Tabernacle has the highest intention with this small group of homes. However, have you thought of families with kids on this small part of home? Bet you not. Have you thought of, of your kids spilling onto Stonebrook property and how we can handle the extra kids? Have you considered making a play space for your kids? And if so, inviting our kids to join you? Bet you not. I am certain none of these concerns made it to the negotiation table because nobody thought of any of this. Please understand. We are not adverse to having Christian Tabernacle as our neighbors. We just see real problems here. How can we solve the problems if we don't ask questions? Now we have a suggestion. I don't know. How about Christian Tabernacle offering this property to empty nesters, older folks who would enjoy living at the apex of all that is cool about Southfield? be a good solution. We respect Christian Tabernacle as a fine example of beautiful places of worship in our community. We simply hope that you will consider the impact you'll have on our community. As a member of the Stonebrook Board of Trustees, I promise that whatever you all decide, we will do everything in our power to be good neighbors. We hope the same for Christian Tabernacle. One more thing. Not one single person. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to say one more thing. Hurry up. 
You kept me waiting for an hour and a half. You, have you kept me waiting for one and a half hours, Madam President. That's right. I'm That's talking about, about the time. artists that were here. Not one single person at this table said, wow, we're going to be global. Congratulations to the artists. Extra time. I'm leaving. You can do whatever you want. Uh, with and comments that were made as renters and landlords such, this is a leasing property. It's not something that people come in month or month, okay, we're going to you know, scam, all right? They're leasing for years, a long period of time. Back to the openness of the clients or, or who are going to be living in here. These are two-bedroom units. We're going to have professional people in there. They are going to be screened. There's not going to be any riffraff coming into this. Yes, we were looking at future plans, which we have kind of discussed with on the other end of the property down here is putting a playground in, clearing the field, putting a playground in for people who have kids in this area. We talked about this weeks ago, that they are separate from the rest of the community. Okay, yes, we don't expect that somebody has kids here to be going down here unless they got friends. You know, they got friends, kids go around the neighborhood. We can do that. We all did that. We did, we are looking at plans, which we will propose into the future, of a playground down at this end for the community of, um, of our of our condos. I encourage you to do that.